Now I've said time and time again that it is great to be able to see your body move the same way it does in a virtual world as it does with you in real life. It really adds in a little bit of extra immersion and is really great to be able to see in any VR game. So I was really happy to find that there was actually a plugin that allowed for you to animate your full upper body very simply by simply passing in three transforms for your hands and your head. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you this plugin, show you how to install it, get it set up, because this is a fantastic plugin if you want to be able to animate your full upper body or even part of your upper body within a VR game. But before we go and jump into that, if you enjoy this video and you want to see even more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and let me know what kind of videos you guys would like to see in the future. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I've already gone ahead. Um, I've opened up the GitHub repository that we're actually going to be getting this plugin from. Uh, I'll actually leave a link to this down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. Um, but the way that, uh, but the name of this plugin is actually called the UBIK solver uh, or upper body IK. Uh, is the other name that's been that uh, it's been called uh, and this is actually developed by Jonas Mulgaard uh, I don't know if I said that last name correctly so I'm hoping I did <laughs> um, but this is a really neat little plugin that makes it really easy to actually just uh, to add animations just to the whole upper body while in VR so it's actually a really neat little plugin so we're actually going to go ahead and get this uh, set up in a project and we can actually see how this functions so first up, we need to actually get this plugin downloaded. Uh, so I'm just going to quite simply do this by downloading it as a zip file. Uh, it's not going to take too long to download. There's, you know, as, as you can see, that was all it took me, you know, a second maybe. Um, so let me go and minimize that. And you'll actually get it right here in your downloads folder. Now, if you've never played or if you've never added a plugin to an Unreal project before, it's actually quite simple. So let's actually go and start by actually unzipping this folder here. Uh, extract here. There we go. Now, uh, this these are the files that you're going to want, or rather you're going to want the whole folder, but you're going to want to make sure that you have all your files there. Um, and right here in our project uh, fol folder, we're going to want to create a new folder called plugins, just like you see there. And go and open that up, and we're just going to want to drag the UBIK solver right into that plugins folder. And that's really all you need to do in order to install plugin. So now if we go and double click on this, you'll actually, well, I wasn't meant to get that, but I am working on Unreal Engine 5. Uh, but this is the prompt that you should get uh, that says missing UBIK solver modules. Uh, if you're, of course, downloading a different plugin, it may say that you're missing uh, different modules. Uh, and then it just asks if you'd like to rebuild them now. We're of course gonna wanna say yes, that way we can open the project and have everything work correctly. Um, and this will likely take just a minute. I know that I've done this a couple of times now and this only takes maybe a minute or two. So I'll go and let this run through and I'll be back in just one sec. So here we are, uh, I have the project open. Um, as you can see, I've done just a little bit of uh, work beforehand, just making sure we have a nice large plane to move around. Uh, but there's not a whole lot that's been done to this otherwise. Now, in order to make sure that our plugins actually installed correctly, we actually go right up here to our plugins tab. If you don't see this, you'll need to go to wherever your settings are. Um, I believe in Unreal Engine 4 that are, it's about right here. But right for Unreal Engine 5, it's right over here and you just have to click on the plugins tab. Um, and we can actually go right over here and then you should have a project and animation tab right here. And UBI K solver will be right in there. And it'll say upper body IK solver right underneath that. Uh, of course, we have a whole bunch of other general information about this plugin as well. So nice, simple. Uh, we can see it's all installed and enabled, all perfectly fine, ready to go. So now let's actually put this to work. So this actually works using an animation blueprint or within an animation blueprint, let me put it that way. So uh, I have actually brought in the mannequin from Unreal Engine 4's third person template, I believe. Uh, so let's go and open this up. And if you've never created an uh, animation blueprint or anim blueprint as Unreal puts it, uh, you should have a create asset tab right up here and you're just gonna wanna create an anim blueprint. So nice, quick and easy. And we don't need the actual uh, skeletal mesh open right now. So we're all good there. 
Now to use our UBI case solver, it's actually quite simple. So let's go ahead, we'll right click and look up UBI case solver. It should show up under skeletal control nodes. And we just take our animation pose, drop that into our output pose. Uh, this note will actually move right on over here because we don't actually have the component pose active here. Uh, but that's fine, it's not going to affect anything. If you have any uh, additional component poses that you'd like to put in beforehand, then you'd of course want to uh, attach those there. Um, now let's go and run through the UBI case solver just real quick. So quite frankly, there's not a whole lot that really would need to be done in most cases. Fortunately, a lot of it's very nicely pre-configured. The main thing that you're probably going to want to make note of is if you're using a different skeleton or anything like that, you're probably going to want to come in here and make sure all your bones are set up correctly. This is, actually works and is pretty well, uh, works pretty well with the default mannequin. However, if you use a different um, character model with a different skeleton or anything like that, you may have uh, the bones are incorrect here. So, but you can actually see we have uh, our head bone is set up correctly along with clavicles, arms, uh, hands, our spine, all the way down to our pelvis. Cause this actually only does from the waist up, uh, if I recall. So it won't do anything below that point. So we're all good there. Um, other than that, there's not really a whole lot that you need to worry about in here. Now, beyond that, uh, we just need to set up some variables here in our animation blueprint. So starting here with our head transform, let's go and promote all, I'm going to take all of our transforms here and just promote them all to variables. Now these are quite, these are uh, actually going to be the transforms for our hands as well as our head. Um, so we're going to actually assign these in our player once we get to that point. But let me actually go and rename these real quick so that way they're easy to find. I'm going to call them head transform, left hand transform, and then one more time, right hand transform. And there we go. Now we're not going to do anything else to them in the animation blueprint. However, you can technically assign them if you'd like and just pass through um, like the components that you need from the player to the animation blueprint. That is certainly an option if you would like to do something like that. Um, you don't need to worry about uh, the applying head, right hand, or left hand transforms, unless of course you don't want one of the transforms to function. Uh, but we do want to promote our settings here to a variable. And we'll actually uh, look at this, we'll actually be setting this in the uh, event graph. But if you actually go and click on it, you can actually see we have a bunch of default values we can actually manually set if we would like. Uh, everything from the offset of the clavicle uh, down to the length of the arms, uh, so on and so forth. You can see that right now they're all zeroed out and that's because we're actually gonna set all these here in a second. Um, and actually let's go and jump into that. So let's go and jump right over into our event graph and we only need to set this once at the beginning. So let's go ahead and get our begin play. There we go. And then jumping into here, uh, we're just going to want to look up UBIK settings. It should really be the only one that shows up here. Now our output node is actually what's going to go into our settings. So let's go ahead, set our settings here. That, those are gonna be our new settings there. And then I'm actually gonna promote both of our defaults and our calibration to variables here. So let me go ahead, there we go. And really you don't need to do anything beyond this point. This is, as I said, this is very much just set up right for, right for you to go. So there's not a whole lot of work that really needs to happen. However, if you would like, you can certainly uh, look at this a little bit more. So if we actually jump into our defaults, this is kind of what it expects the default positioning to be. <clears throat> um, so you'll want to take some kind of base height and set our defaults based off of this. Um, our calibration, however, this probably is going to be the only point that you may want to modify. Uh, it's basically going to reconfigure our defaults based off of the height and our upper arms distance. And it will use that to create our new settings values here. Um, so of course, if you want to readjust the height or the distance of the arms, that is entirely up to you. 
Uh, as I said, this works pretty well the way that it is, so you really don't need to worry too much about that here. Uh, but that is available for you to play around with uh, if you would like. <clears throat> now let's go and jump over into our player. So um, in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5, they're both could be a little bit different. So I'll cover some of the basic differences between Unreal Engine 4's player and Unreal Engine 5's um, as we get to that point. Um, oh, by the way, make sure you remember the, uh, the name of your animation blueprint that you made because you are going to need that here in just one second. Um, but I will cover uh, just some of the basic difference for our pawns here. So let's go and start in our viewport. So starting here in our viewport, we want to go ahead and add a skeletal mesh. Now, uh, you can't, it really doesn't matter too much what you connect it to. Uh, our, the UBI case solver actually works based off of the world transforms. So even if you were to attach it to something else, it should still shoot to wherever it needs to be because it's based off the world, not based off of a relative transform. Um, for that reason, you can also uh, have it attached to a different actor or something like that if you would like. Going into our skeletal mesh here, we're going to just need to do two things here. Our first thing is we'll want to jump into our skeletal mesh and of course set it. So for us, it's going to be SK Mannequin. And our animation class, we're also going to need to set as well. So um, that's where you want to remember the name of your animation blueprint. So for us, it's UE4 Mannequin Skeleton Anim Blueprint. That's the one that we had made. And you just want to click on that. And you can see it actually shoots down here uh, to our origin. This is actually roughly what it looked like in preview. Um, and I forgot to mention, but it, it won't look right simply because we're not passing through the transforms 24 seven, you know, while we're in the editor at all times. So it's going to look kind of weird and discontorted like this. Um, but yeah, so let's go and jump into our event graph now. And we're going to want to get our tick and we want to grab our animation instance from our skeletal mesh. Uh, so that way we can actually set those transforms that we had set in our animation blueprint. So let's get anim instance. We want to cast to our, to our animation blueprint. Uh, so for us, it was that UE4 mannequin skeleton. Go ahead and drag that out. And now we just want to set our transform. So let's go ahead and set this. Uh, set left hand. Try to make this look a little bit neat. Set right hand, and there you go. Uh, so those are all of our transforms that we had in our animation blueprint, which you should recall. We had set those right at the beginning. Um, now this is where you're gonna have some differences between Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so Unreal Engine 4 actually splits the VR player into uh, technically three different parts, two different actors. Uh, so far, I call it the BP Motion Controller, um, or they may be called BP Motion Controller Components. Uh, I forgot which one it's called. It's one of those two. Um, th those are gonna be attached to both your hands, and those are gonna house the motion controller components for your left and your right hand. Uh, and those are actually set as variables in the motion controller pawn. Um, I believe they're called left and right controller. And the motion controller pawn also holds your camera, which is what your head is. Um, so it's gonna be, it's the same idea as what we do here in Unreal Engine 5. However, it's just split into a lot more actors, so it's a different process. Um, so I won't, uh, unfortunately I can't show you here since I am working in Unreal Engine 5, but that, that should kind of give you a general idea of how this is meant to work. So going right over here, um, like I said, here in Unreal Engine 5, we're going to need both of our motion controllers and our camera. Fortunately, this is a little bit easier simply because Unreal Engine 5 wraps it all together. Um, but that's kind of, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of weird, but oh well. So now we need to get the world transforms of all three of these components. So let's go and start with the camera that's going into our head. And then our left motion controller is of course going into our left hand transform. And then our right motion controller world transform is of course going into our right hand transform. Um, try to make this look a little bit neat. It's always a little bit weird trying to make these kind of things look neat here. Um, but there you go, so that's it. So now that we have our uh, variable set, we are now all good to go. 
our UBI, the UBI K plugin is all set up and we'll automatically create our, uh, animate our upper body. So uh, we're all good to go here. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, go and get this started in VR and uh, be right back in a second. All right, so now we're all set up. Um, I actually don't have that tightened on. I did kind of want to have it a little bit tighter. Um, but there you go. So you can actually see, um, I actually forgot to disable the uh, the Vive ones here, but um, you can actually see now where the hands are and uh, which is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, but you can actually see, uh, I unfortunately don't have any sort of mirror or anything, so, um, but we do have the shadow. You can see as I move my head, you can see the head turning and you can see um, our arms are fully animating and all that. Um, the only thing you will notice is that the legs themselves do not move. So actually if I go and crouch down, you'll actually see that it just starts sinking into the floor. Um, unfortunately, I can't get a really good look at the legs themselves because the chest is kind of big there, but um, you can actually see it all works fine. Now, you can also see too, if we actually drop, let me move my controller a little bit away and back up, that if our controller's out of reach, it'll simply just try to go as close as possible and keep that same rotation that we have, which is pretty nice. Um, works pretty well there. Um, and there we go. So we now have a fully animated upper body. So there you go. And with that, we now have a fully animated upper body in VR. Like I said, this is probably the easiest method I've ever seen to do this. Um, and it really makes it very simple and nice and easy to use. So I would definitely suggest at the release, like checking out this plugin. It is really neat, really cool to use, um, makes things very simple as well. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, I will see you in the next reality.